All right, I'm gonna have what's a, uh, maybe not quick, because my videos are never quick, but probably shaky because I'm using my phone. I have like, we have the nice video camera and a tripod, but it's it's at my house, so yeah, um, you're just gonna have to deal with the shaky cam on the phone. But anyway, so this is a Echo One Barrett Rec 7 or something, and it's made by JG. Their gearboxes are well, all airsoft guns. At the, you know, it's a pot metal. But with pot metals, the, the quality can vary depending on what you put into the pot. So, But these are really low quality um, pot metal gearboxes. So what can happen just from the force of a spring snapping back on a plastic piece is that this little, this little piece here, which blocks the trigger shuttle from going too far back, has broken off very cleanly. Let's see, I can see the grain in there. Uh, whatever. Anyway, it has broken off clean with the gearbox shell. <clears throat> so what happens with that is on a special, well, on semi, but if you shoot semi once on full auto, well, basically just fucks your gun. You're, uh, you're screwed. So what happens is you're shooting on semi, the trigger shuttle goes forward, your trigger is still forward, but before your trigger goes back, you know, imperceptibly, um, the cutoff lever that's actuated by the, on the bottom side of your sector gear picks up and pops the shuttle up like that. So it goes up just a tiny bit. I'm looking through the, the viewfinder on the phone, so it might be a little, little wonky. So basically the back of the shuttle goes up a little bit so it can clear the trigger when the trigger is forward. See, it's not moving that. So it gets popped up. The trigger is still forward. And then this goes back. I mean, this happens so quick, you don't even... It's imperceptible to you. So, what happens is it goes too far back. Oh, this is hard to do when you're looking through a <laughs> viewfinder. So it's gone too far back. And the trigger, instead of being on this little ledge down there, see there's a little ledge on the, the trigger, on the switch, the shuttle. Oh, that's, uh... So it's supposed to just kind of go right there because there's that little ledge that holds onto the trigger, the, uh, the actual trigger to the shuttle to push it forward. So what happens is, because this happens so quick when you're on semi, is this guy has popped up from the uh, inner reverse latch while this, uh, in reverse, actually, the uh, cutoff lever, while your trigger is still forward and going back. So without that post there, the trigger shuttle has gone too far back. So when you try to shoot again, it won't happen. And the, uh, you know, the spring tension for the spring that's right there, you know, is going to hold this back. So basically you're screwed. <clears throat> Sometimes you can, like, tap the side of the gun and this will click forward, but, uh, I mean, that's, it's gonna get you one shot, so, um, so basically you're, you're fucked right there, so, we're gonna take out the sector, <coughs> excuse me, oh, and this, that go, these, these guns are just shimmed like complete garbage, there was like, one shim on, oh yeah, and the piston's kind of shredded, and, uh, if you look at the back of that, there's no shim on the bottom of that, so that, you can see the grease there, that was writing on this outside of the bearing race on like the holder so you got all that friction so this is kinda it's kinda dumb to have ball bearings but you're writing on a solid part of metal you know because you got no no shim like every other company does so pretty stupid but again you know made by JG and marked up a bunch <coughs> or Echo 1 so, get that out of the way. What we're gonna do, which I've already kind of done, is take the trigger out and <coughs> cough on the camera. So, popping this trigger assembly out. I've already removed a lot of stuff from the gearbox and I've kind of thrown parts across the bench. 
I should be drinking more on camera. All right, shaky cam. You are going to need to take everything off the gearbox shell. So, you know, the safety, all the gears, all the you know, stuff that's in there. And if your bushings don't like stay in by themselves, you just give them, you know, a little tap of the back of something. So, ideally, if you want the bearings out, I mean, bushings, bearings, I mean, they're bearing bushings. Semantics. Anyway, so, these guys, they don't want to come out, even though it's freaking moving. I don't want to pound them out because they're low quality and they would probably get ruined. So, <clears throat> right uh, there, uh, I have to use my rail thing there. So, I have to look by my, uh, my eyes instead of looking through the thing because it's just so small. Anyway, right there, you see that square? Of, uh, it's broken metal and it's, it's pretty much flush with the, uh, with the gearbox. So, we got all your crap out of there. You have your, your um, selector plate off the gun. <coughs> Basically, everything that needs to be off has to be taken off. So, what we're going to do is we are going to find a screw that is... Where did I put the little broken piece? There it is. We're going to find a screw... That is about the same size as the metal piece that broke off. You know, <clears throat> this is, uh, it has to be a coarse screw too. It doesn't work as well with a fine, if you use a fine threaded screw, you will need to tap this gearbox and, you know, it's just, that's a pain. So. We have our screw, which is roughly the same size. And it has to be longer because it has to go through the, uh, the gearbox shell, which is, I don't know, like three-ish millimeters or so. Um, so it's going to be long enough to go through the gearbox and be as long as the post inside. If it's too long, that is no big deal because <clears throat> you can always cut that down the extra length. Because if you look at your sector gear, you know it's stepped there, those gears. But if it's too long, I'm get some good light in here. Better light. If it's too long, your, uh, your replacement screw, it's going to hit barely the uh, the uh, sector teeth just barely 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 so it's got to be shorter than the step between the, uh, the to the um, the piston the teeth that interact with the piston <clears throat> oh, that's another thing with this freaking you know they shred out the pistons even though this is like a nylon uh, reinforced piston. It still shreds them out. I think what it is is the the gears might be too tall for this because they're all the same height. It's not like pre-engagement. Um, I mean the uh, the metal tooth is low and the metal tooth doesn't have any damage to it. So I think it's the high, and this happens to a lot of these guns. In fact, every one I've opened uh, JG like this has had damage to the piston like that where it's all the teeth so it's not pre-engagement it's you know not it's not slipping off the tooth right there I think it's just you know, teeth are too tall or something like that and that's just uh, shredding it but um, oh and this is one of those gearboxes that is narrower than others so you have to either sand down the sides of your piston or you know it's just whatever just just don't buy one that'll make it easier so what we're gonna do <clears throat> is we are going to take a punch because it'll make things easier to line up. Oh, my hand's shaking now. So we're gonna put a, a punch and we're gonna punch right in the center of that square. So I'm gonna do that off camera because uh, I need two hands to do that. And then we're going to find a drill bit that is the same diameter as the inside of the screw, not with the 
not with the actual threads on the screw, but the actual inside diameter of the screw. So when I come back, I will have um, screwed the gearbox and uh, <laughs> screwed the gearbox. I will have drilled the gearbox, inserted the screw, and cut the head off the screw. So on this side, it needs to be flush, or else it'll hit the selector plate. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut that head off of the screw after I get it in there, and then we will resume the video. And we're back. So I have drilled the hole and put the screw into it. Um, the screw actually went in pretty easy because the, the pot metal is not very uh, very strong. And I should also note that if you um, can't get your, your bushings or bearings out, just, just cover them with tape on both sides. Again, looking through the camera, <laughs> things are slightly different. Wow, that one just fell out of its own volition. Anyway, cover them with tape so you don't get any uh, medical particles in there. So as you see, we got our, our screw in there. It is a little to the side. I would say that's intentional, but it's not. It just went in crooked, but such is life. But it actually did make our life a little better because if you look, uh, if we get it in focus, it's actually slanting towards the trigger assembly. But on the other side, here's the grinding. So I ground the head off the screw with a Dremel. Use your favorite Dremel metal obliterating tool. Um, the screw itself is um, they're usually very hard metal. So use uh, I just use the little cutoff wheels. But if you have like the carbide. Um, cut off wheel it's better than the um, those uh, stone wheel looking things you'll, you'll be there forever if you have a if you have a strong steel screw so anyway you grind off the head so it is flush with the side of the gearbox and I actually ground a little channel in there which you probably can't see because it's getting washed out but there is a little channel where the screw is and what I'm gonna do is take some super glue and put it in that channel to kind of secure it on this side. And on this side, I'm also going to take some super glue and put it around the base of this just to secure it better. Um, when you're putting super glue on there, I use this uh, the thick gel sort of super glue, but when you have the You have your cutoff lever. Well, you don't want it in there, but you want to make sure there is clearance on the side. It's no big deal. If you mound it up too much, you can always take a X-Acto knife and scrape it away. Just cut and scrape it away. And you'll need to clean this too with a acetone or something to get all the grease out. I've already cleaned this gearbox, so because it was really a mess. So basically clean the gearbox and put, especially around the screw, put super glue around the base of that. Just, uh, you know, a little bit, maybe up to that fur sort of thread coming out of there. And on that little channel on the other side. So it, uh, like I said, it's barely, barely bigger than a scratch on there. But, I mean, it's kind of noticeable, like in the middle there. But... So it's going kind of through the, uh, the body of the screw. So I put some glue on that too, just because. I think it probably does more on the inside than it does on the outside. But that's just the way I've been doing it for years. So I'm going to do that, and we'll go on to our next phase. All right, the glue is dry. I have reassembled the trigger assembly. Mostly I left off the, the trigger spring itself just so it's easier to show. Wow, my hand is shaky. I wish I brought the real camera and the tripod. So anyway, I got glue up until the first thread on that screw. This little mound of super glue on the other side. It kind of, you know, had a little mound, so I just used a hobby file and uh, knocked that down. You do sandpaper. So, what our fix does with our little screw there, we have our cutoff lever, which acts on this little, little cam on the bottom of the sector gear to pop it off and this happens milliseconds 
that's why it resets when you you let off your trigger on your on semi. That's why also if you kind of half stroke it, you get that gearbox lock up. So you, you don't want that either. So basically what's gonna happen here is you're going to pull the trigger forward. You know, pulls the shuttle forward. But now when the shuttle is hit by the cutoff lever, which I can kind of do, there we go. So it rides up over the trigger itself, the shuttle. And you can see right there where it's kind of uh, that dirty mark is where the, uh, the trigger sort of hits that notch to keep it there. So now the trigger shuttle is going all the way back, stopped by the screw, which, uh, you know, was supposed to be stopped by that, but that is broken. So now when the trigger goes back, it clicks back behind the shuttle and it just works again. So there you go. You can fix that home if you have a drill and super glue. Um, you know, Dremel is nice, but I'm sure you can uh, you can make do with a file or something to take the head off the screw. Like you said, the screw has to go in this side. So you, the head's on this side, you just grind it off on this side. Um, that's the easiest way. So there you go. Uh, I don't know, maybe quick tech tip. I don't know how long the video is going to go, but it can't be more than 10 minutes. So, if you have any uh, questions or whatever, um, just go on Reddit. I don't look at the YouTube comments there. I don't know, they're really toxic, but yeah, go on Reddit, ask questions on the Airsoft slash R, you know, slash Airsoft. So there you go. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, you know, thumbs up, whatever.